I'm going to be doing the Final Cut profile in this one, so this is all the video side of things, and then the Photoshop editing, which is where I did all the drawings for this. I will go through that in the Photoshop video. So for this one, I just used Final Cut Pro um, X. This is whatever the latest version is. Don't know. Um, but the entire file is just under one minute twenty. Comprises of a few different scenes. Um, it started off sort of with this idea, um, with this first idea here, which just takes up the first fifteen seconds or so, twelve seconds. Um, so yeah, it basically started with with this sort of idea here. That was that was that was all of the idea that I had initially. Um, I thought of this about one in the morning, um, a couple of Wednesdays ago, and I just thought, this is what I want to do. I sat down. I came up with this idea and then I went to college the next day. I shot just this photo for it, this one of Kate, and then I thought, how am I going to do this? Um, I'd never attempted animation before, um, in Final Cut Pro anyway, on this kind of scale, before I'd basically drawn things in paint and then sort of moved them and those were awful. This is much better. Um, but what? What I think I've mainly drawn the sort of animation style from is almost the old Monty Python intros, as well as you can go to the inspiration page on this website. And there's um, a couple of Getter videos, the new Paramore video, um, and those all have this kind of drawn art style, which is all quite interesting. Um, but at the beginning, I didn't have any real knowledge of Final Cut Pro beyond the actual sort of cutting clips together um, because that's that's what I've used it for before this. When I'm editing videos I cut in Final Cut and then I grade in Resolve and that's just my workflow. Whereas with this there's no grading in Resolve, there is just a lot of cutting and editing in this. And I had no knowledge of masks until about here. This is where I figured out how masked masks work and before that um, I was doing it almost the old-fashioned way. Um, wow, these fans are really spinning up. Shh, I do apologize for that background noise. Um, I did it sort of the old-fashioned way. So if I go in here, you can see the upper jaw. Um, so if I get rid of this, then there's sort of all these different bits. Um, So the upper jaw here is masking off this area of the mouth so that the slime is just coming out of the mouth. Of course, this could now be done with masks. Yes, yeah, so everything's basically been done as if I was drawing everything on paper and then putting it together. That's kind of how I approached it. So all the parts down here you can see sort of... Um, there's like upper jaw and then up here we have like just the top half of the head so I can get rid of that and then this is all the slime here which is then being covered up it's just like it's just a PNG um, I'll, I can go through that more in depth in the uh, in the Photoshop run through but just these areas of the eyes are actually see-through um, and the rest of it acts as a mask um, so it's sort of the same here um, even the background here, that is, that's all cut out. So the actual head part is one image, and then behind it is a, another background. So I can get rid of that background, and that covers the slime on either side. So there's, yeah, it looks weird, but. This is just kind of how it's all been built up. So then, so then I could have this bit where the background disappears, but the color is both here and in here because it is in front of 
the slime and in front of the eyes and everything like that. So that's just kind of how I approached well all of it really until I figured out the masking process over here like what like 35 seconds into it I actually discovered how you do any of that so that took quite a while so that's the first scene um, you can actually hear the sound because the sounds playing from my MacBook so I'll just play the first scene through Yeah, so that's the first scene. It's pretty basic, um, but that was what sort of formulated the idea for this. Um, this actual shot is reused throughout it. Um, so yeah, that is the first shot. Then move on to the second one where the brain rocket flies off into space. Just run through that one. There we go. Um, you'll notice the little glitch there. Um, those are just a set of royalty free glitch transitions that I found um, because I don't I don't know how to really make those to be honest. I mean I could probably figure it out but I was more focusing on doing all of this stuff instead of making my own transitions. Um, I'll go into how I did the eyes and stuff in Photoshop 1. So for this one, the head is cut into three main parts. There is this part and then the left and right halves of Kate's head. So the brain is already in there, sort of below that layer. Um, layer wise, this is probably the most basic of the scenes, to be fair. Yeah, we just got the star background which is just keyed to move. Um, oh, yeah, that's a good point. I should probably talk about why everything moves. That would be pretty reasonable. Starting off with the eye opening here. Um, if I show these, um, let's zoom out a bit. Um, so you can see this line here. This is what the eye kind of follows. Um, that's the wrong keyboard. So it here it's like moving along the line so you basically set two points and it then just follows that you can see over here um, if you watch that little Y value you can see it changing and then it's the same for the other eye um, so you just set two or more points um, so there's like a key in there and I can just move to the next one and move to the next one so that's when it's fully open and they all work like that um like the slime here you can see this one has it sort of moves in like a like a wiggly pattern um so yeah you can see it following that pattern there if i just uh hide that you can probably see it a bit better um there we go yeah so once again you can look over here everything is just um, keyframed so that it all moves exactly how I wanted it to um, everything moves and it stops at a certain point like it starts and stops and that's just how it's all set up um, for these bits where the backgrounds flash you can you can probably guess what I did um, I just made a lot of I just made every single color and then it is all um, sort of stacked so every single frame is a different color which creates this sort of strobing effect um, here yep yeah. um, and then just more keyframing uh, of course all these bits are keyframed to come straight down there was a yeah here I needed to mask off one part um, where is it yeah there you go you can just about see it there um, so as I couldn't figure out masks that slime is still there um, so I just made this little bit that just kind of covers that up um, 
so in that respect it's almost exactly like doing this on paper i just like popped in another little bit um and kind of patched it over which is which is yes yeah, it works incredibly well um so for these bits where wait fit there we go um for the bits where the head opens up um you can see it moves around a point so you can see the see the little point over here um so that is just defined by this anchor over here um so originally the anchor's in the center of the image and then you just you just move it so that it's there and then everything will just rotate around that so it's the same for the second half of the head there we go so everything just works like that and then um the head all drops away so all of this stuff is keyframed to do exactly the same thing yeah there we go you can see all the lines moving down um, just to create the illusion that the camera is moving up um, and then to enforce that the star background that is that is consistently moving throughout this shot to create the idea that it's it's flying up into space um so that star background is just one long image as you can see from here there we go and then the brain that is just um throughout the shot it's just behind kate's head as you can see from down here if you think of this as layers in photoshop basically so this is this is the bottom layer of the background and then this one and then these ones are just kind of piled on top um so that just moves yep it kind of wiggles from side to side just to kind of make it look a bit more organic and a little bit less like it's just moving up in a straight line because i didn't think that was awfully interesting again you can see all the positions changing over here um yeah so what i've what i've basically ended up doing is last year my project was there was a lot of video whereas this one i've taken photos and then made those into a video um well photos and drawings um i sort of made those into a video so it's it's keeping more with the theme of well general photography to be fair um so let's just watch that little scene through oh wait let me play it with sound much much better with sound There we go. Um, if you're wondering what the track is because you love it so much and you don't think it's disgusting, it's uh, it's Inhalant Abuse by Getter. It's one of his new tracks. I, d I thought of this idea and then I thought that track is amazing and I shall use that one. Um, so, yeah. Also, yeah, it, it just works really well. It's, it's like weird and it's, it's a strange track. Um, it's full of very strange sounds. So I just thought it went excellently with this to be fair so the next scene is the one where the brain flies through space um this one is also incredibly simple i mean it's simpler than the other one to be fair um it's just this really long asteroid belt um let's zoom out a lot so yeah that is just a it's just a really long scene to be honest um the the rocket and the asteroid belt just move um, along that path there um, it's pretty basic the actual asteroid belt itself in order to get that in order to get the strobing effect is just one big PNG image so that it's all see-through and then below it is just the same strobes as from the first scene um, which course shine through and they are that is of course static so if I take that away it just looks like a strobing screen um, and then the brain is just the same brain from the previous scene but keyframed to move so that scene is incredibly simple let's just watch that one through And there's another little glitch. Yeah, 
Yeah, those glitch transitions are really cool, to be fair. Um, so this next one is the one where Rhiannon is first seen. So this is the actual introduction of a new character. Um, just kind of going to the into the story, which isn't not a real story to be honest, but it basically when I was coming up with the idea, I was I was sitting there, I was thinking, right, I need to come up with an idea, and then I thought about ideas themselves, just you know, just like the concept of ideas. Um, I probably did a better explanation of this on, on a post on the blog somewhere, but I'll just talk through it. I thought, what's the easiest way that most people tell other people ideas? And I thought, it's generally word of mouth. You'll you'll tell your friend, you'll be like, hey, have you ever thought about, have you ever thought about a monkey riding a donkey? And they'll go, I haven't, but I have now. And you've given them your idea. But they might not have exactly the same vision as you. They might be thinking that the monkey is riding its side saddle when in fact it is riding it like a normal human so the best way to transfer your idea perfectly from one person to the other person is to just give them your brain um i mean it wouldn't happen in this world because that's probably illegal but in the world that this video has been created the perfect idea well the perfect way to show your friend exactly what you're thinking is to just hand them your brain and well it happens in multiple ways um it's fired out of a head um via a rocket it is taken from a taken from a head uh via a suction cup and just dropped inside of another person's head and then of course it is sucked out by a hoover which i oh i love that one um and then this end bit it's just calm. The video definitely progresses. Um, it becomes weirder and I figure out how to do more things towards the end. Um, but this one, it it's almost like the, the brain scene with Kate, but upside down. So instead of it being the top of Kate's head opening, it's the bottom of Rhiannon's head. Um, and therefore, it works in exactly the same way. So... Here we have the anchor points, which just just rotate. Um, there we go. Yeah, you can see them rotating. Nothing else moves um, except the brain rocket, which just follows its predetermined path. Um, the background here, this bit is the. Um, it doesn't work the same as these ones. This one is cut out to be that shape. Oh, look at this. <coughs> Sorry, I'm probably not going to cut this because it's just going to be such a long video that I don't have the effort to, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so these ones are on top of the image instead of being underneath this one. Um, you can probably see that by if I just do. No, it's the wrong keyboard. There we go. That, yeah. Um, oh, I think I just turned on my other computer. Why are you on? Oh, that's because I use that keyboard. But anyway, so yeah, that seems pretty easy. Um, for this one, the eyes just appear on top instead of being actually part of the image because it was just easier, to be honest, um, to add them in. So these are the same eyes that I made for Kate, um, just kind of put on top. Um, because, I mean, it doesn't really matter that much. It, they still look pretty good. They don't have kind of this same effect, so that it looks like they're physically in her head, but I think I fixed that later on, possibly, maybe. Um, but yes, yeah, so let's just watch that scene through with music, preferably. The way I kind of, the way I fuse the music with the video itself, um, you'll see most of the times when things change, it's because there's sort of a breath in the music, um, which is especially noticeable in this one. I think there actually is a breath. Yeah, sort of that, sort of that breathing sound. That's kind of like the turnaround of the scene. Yeah, and then 
that that kick drum hit that's when the strobing and the eyes change and stuff that's kind of when the idea hits her um and then so everything lasts for i think most scenes probably last about the same amount of time just because of the fact that it's the music is written in that way so yeah that scene that seems that seems pretty basic this one is probably the most complex this one took the most amount of time due to the amount of moving parts um it consists of going from the bottom to the top there's this swelling background which just continuously turns um throughout the scene what i wanted was so of course Rihanna is in this scene and then I knew that I wanted another person in it so I sort of had to zoom out so that's why she kind of goes from being here to being on the edge of it so it's kind of like the camera's like zooming out and then Alicia appears here now the claw that took a long time um, because the claw itself the actual claw itself moves down into shot and then here we also of course have two bits that are then moving throughout the scene um, so they they move down and grasp onto the head there yeah and like pick up the top of the head so just getting all of this to work this probably took I think this one scene took like maybe three hours to draw everything for it and sort of finish it off um, I think it's the longest continuous scene um, but this was also the scene where I figured out how you mask things in Final Cut Pro X which I didn't understand before which is really helpful because then I could use it for the rest of it but it uses so Rian's head is of course in two parts um, the brain is under there the whole time this time it's just a normal brain not a brain rocket um, so the green arm comes down the claws then grab the top of Rian's head and move it all up so to do this I just had everything highlighted keyframed over here so everything just moves um, can I there we go so this is what all the keyframing looks like yep there we go so each one of these is sort of a command just to make things move so this is the brains uh, track sort of so if we just if we follow the brain um, you'll just see it's, it's this one here let's just follow that along um, so it starts off in Rianne's head comes up comes along is then dropped into Alicia's head and then when the beat drops and Alicia's head starts opening up and doing weird things the brain then starts bouncing so you can see it moving to each of its predetermined little points um, so each of these little white bits is another keyframe so that's a place that it has to move to um, so yeah you can just about see it jumping to everywhere um, if I just play it you can see the brain moving up and down there yeah but here you can actually see all the different parts which is it's, it's pretty interesting it does look like a bit of a mess um, here up in this window but um, if I just highlight the entire window actually um, I can show you everything that's going on in there we go there is this is all of the keyframing that happens during this scene um, so you can see all the little red lines so it starts off with Rihanna in there and they're moving in and then we've got all the different parts that are moving um, like this box here that's continuously spinning because of the moving background um, it, this scene complexity wise probably one of the hardest to make um, hence the amount of time it took which was 
a long time, but in the end it was worth it. Um, so, yeah, getting this, this was all pretty easy, just highlighting two things, making sure they're keyframed together and moving them. Um, so um, this bit here, when Alicia's head starts to open up, that was a little bit of a pain. Um, mainly due to setting these anchor points. So, of course, this picture here, the anchor point was originally right in the middle and then it had to be moved down here so that they all pivot around this point. Um, like a, I don't know, like a door opening. Um, I suppose that's sort of the hinge um, so all that had to be done and put in place so that everything just moves properly and together um, this part here where the slime comes out of Rianne's head this is the bit where I figured out how you mask things otherwise I would have had to have either somehow filled in this bit or made another circle piece that only goes in here which would have would have stayed in line with the rest of it but also would have been incredibly difficult so instead up here there is a mask drawn that just transforms so that it moves during the uh, like as the slime comes down you can look over here uh, okay um, can look over here so the box just moves down um, layer wise it's behind this bit so the box starts about here um, so that it just comes out of the top of the head and goes down into the rest of her head um, if I just there we go um, yeah there we go so you can see that, that all goes the whole way down um, but the top of Rian's head, which is here, there we go. So yeah, everything just kind of comes out of like this one little area, um, which is then of course covered by the top of Rian's head and then the bottom. So that's all. That's all kind of. That was all done with the masking tool, which is down here somewhere. Keying masks, draw mask. Yeah, that was. Once, once I knew how to use it, that was pretty good. Um, before then, I didn't have a clue what I was doing, so I managed to figure that all out. Um, but yeah, that scene, that's just that's about it. So then, let's 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 watch the scene through, shall we? Um, I've got music. Yep. So then towards the end of that scene, I just keyframed it so that, just selected everything so that all of Rhiannon, all of this bit, the head, all of the green claw all moves off to the left. They all exit stage left. There we go. Or is it stage right? Hmm. I think it's stage right. Ignore me. Um, and then Alicia moves over to the left. The background changes just to kind of show a scene change, a bit of a change from that background. Um, I'll go through how this background was made in the Photoshop video. Pretty easy. Um, no. I'll go through it then. Um, so Alicia moves over to the left so that we can introduce a new character from the right, uh, which is Henry the Hoover, um, who has Kate's eyes. So throughout the entire video, we don't actually see Kate's eyes on Kate. Um, you instead see Kate's eyes taking the place of Henry's, um, which I just thought that that's a pretty good little little sort of Easter egg kind of thing. Um, wait, let's zoom in a bit. Actually, I don't really know. I've had it zoomed out so far this whole time. Um, there we go. So, yeah, there we go. This scene reasonably simple. Um, Again, masking has been used. If we click here on the brain, you can see that it just moves from there to there, um, but it has two masks on it. There's a mask at this end to stop it from um, 
going past the Hoover's nozzle. Um, and there's also a mask this side so that it just comes out of Alicia's ear. And then if we also look down here, if you look at the scale X and Y, that is what causes um, the brain to um, come out sort of shrunk and then enlarge and then shrink again. So that is the Y scaling, which has just been keyframed over here. There's no actual representation here, but that, that's all over in this panel on the right hand side. Um, yeah, and then once the brain has fully been uh, sucked in, Alicia disappears to the left, which isn't actually illustrated uh, in that. Um, there we go. Alicia kind of drops down um, out the way, the, the way she originally came in to the video. There we go. She drops down. Henry Hoover moves into the middle. Um, this bit here, the, uh, the background is again just a PNG, so all the black bits are see-through you could say um, and then when it comes to here behind it is just place the strobing effect so that does this there we go um, that effect looks oh that next scene this scene is great I love that scene it's really good turned out really well So yeah, that all happens. This one reasonably easy. Um, the background just just moves. That just kind of uh, spins round, as you can see over here in the rotation. And then Henry the Hoover just spins and gets smaller at the same time. His scale decreases over here on the scale slider. Um, as, so it kind of looks like he's falling down the uh, the endless vortex. Um, Basically, the idea for this scene, I was like, right, I need something to suck out a brain. What sucks? And then, well, Hoover's, obviously. So, and then I thought, Henry Hoover's? There, that's kind of like the classic. Um, so, I kind of wanted to give it kind of a personality. So, I gave it some eyes on stalks, and it needed eyes, so I gave it Kate's. But it gets the same eyes that kind of follow the idea. So, when people are given the idea in the form of the brain, um, they then get kind of like these massive sort of they're almost like realistic cartoon eyes um i don't know if you've seen the art of like realistic simpsons but they all have this kind of um they all sort of look like this uh can i get up a photo let's have a look uh realistic Simpsons. Oh, I spelled Simpsons wrong. Um, there it is. Right. Yeah. So there we go. This was like I originally had this idea, and then I was like, "Wow, this sort of looks like the realistic Simpsons sort of thing." And then I looked at this, and yeah, it's almost exactly like that. And also, um, a bit like the Rick and Morty eyes. Um, where they're just like these massive white eyes with just a tiny little in them. They have sort of crosses for pupils, but um, because I added the shading and stuff, it kind of gives it like a more realistic look. Um, so, yeah, there we go. That's that scene. That one's all pretty simple. Another glitch transition. Let's just watch through that scene, shall we? And that brings us on to this scene, which David said definitely reminded him of um, Vertigo, I think the film is. Um, I assume it's like a like a Hitchcock film or something. Um, but the, the original idea for this was to take one photo from the front and then um, using Photoshop's 3D conversion to sort of create like a 3D model of it. But what I ended up doing, because I don't have Photoshop Extended Edition, was I took a series of photos of Rhiannon turning round um, if I just remove those bits I took a series of photos of Rhiannon just turning round um, and then put them together in a in a separate Final Cut project um, 
just so that it was easier for them to it was it was easy for me to just import it and then key the black out of it um so there we go the face just kind of spins round there um a lot of the effect is done because of the keying um even though there isn't that many photos it still appears reasonably smooth just because of how quickly it works um yeah so it's not too bad it doesn't give like a proper illusion of depth but it works it works pretty well um i really like the scene and then when you add in both the background layers you get this very sort of strange effect just because of how it's been keyed um so in the chroma keyer up here um the strength is set down to zero and then the sample color has been set so that it takes sort of the darkest parts of the image and then makes those transparent so that all her hair um which is reasonably dark has sort of become this transparent color um so that when she spins round you can still see all of the spiral kind of behind it um which i i don't know i just think it's a really cool effect i just really like how it looks um it's sort of spooky sort of mighty boosh kind of styling um and then it gets to here and it stops like right here um yeah if i just disable the backgrounds you can see that normally it's just it's just Rand's face to be honest um, if I show you this scene without the chroma keying there we go um, without it it's it's pretty bland um, it doesn't look awfully good because this isn't cut out awfully well um, but when it's all being keyed it really fits in with the style um, sort of messy like the rest of it it's not I I as a person can't really draw awfully well which is why this style of very cartoonish very childish not refined art works really well for me um, like it's all it's all quite basic very bold colors black outlines um, no no straight lines no shading it's just just bold I mean how many colors are in this entire thing um, there's like pink and green there's some blue pink green blue and yellow I think uh, just about all the main colors in it um, there's all the strobing but that doesn't really count but for most of it it's pink and green with the introduction of blue and yellow towards the end um, but yeah that all works very well um, I love how the art style all came together um, worked really well in the end so here like Rian's head got very close um, this was all sort of done in a very I I just did it as it came to me so like she came towards the screen and I was like something needs to happen there um, so I split the head into two halves which then open up and we see the return of um, Kate's face this is just a screenshot from earlier on um, which I then cut out in Photoshop and that has then been keyed in oh goodness I did not mean to do that what did I just move yeah so Rian's head um, the the bottom jaw um, when I was doing this originally I had it so that the line just went along here and kind of split the lips in half but I thought eh that's a bit that's a bit basic um, so I sort of did what happened here um, kind of took like a a uh, bit of inspiration from here where the the bottom half of the eyes are just gone um, originally I was intending to leave the eyes here and have the brain there but the eyes went up here and the same sort of thing happened here so even though the video itself is very strange there's then little things in it which are also kind of that extra little bit of weird just to add in like some extra details which you may not notice the first time you see it which is why it's on a loop so that when you go to see it you can just watch it again and again and again and you can kind of pick up on all these little things so the head opens up um, of course as everything is keyed um, the actual patterns in her eyes and things move while well, they change as she moves um, and then Kate's face comes to comes here to fill up the screen 
And then I thought, how, how where are we going to go from here? Um, and then I thought, well, the eyes could sort of open up. Um, wait, let me just, yeah, so um, just going back to this, uh, keyframe wise, that is just, you can, you can sort of see it over here. Um, there is the lower jaw, so you can see the scale increases as it moves towards the screen, um, and the Y position moves just so that it looks like it looks like the camera is going in through. It either it either looks like the camera is going in through the mouth, or that Rhiannon's head is coming over the camera. Either way, um, just depends how you interpret it. To be honest, um, yeah. So then here. Um, this bit was just done more keyframing um, this one is done with the X scale factor I want to say um, yeah so it almost it looks like there's sort of a door opening towards the screen um, the inspiration for, for this was sort of um, like portholes on ships um, and then the other one is just um, rotating around a point like the halves of the head earlier um, and then here, you sort of you, you go in, you go in through the eye. Um, let's pop over here. So you kind of go through the eye, and then there's there's like another one, and then there's just the blackness here, and then this is basically like a credit sequence. So this this is like the last one. This is the last part to it. Um, I didn't want it to go on for too long. Um, I thought like around a minute. Um, I mean, it ended up being what a minute, eighteen, nineteen. Um, but yeah, so these are just um, PNGs where the eyes are cut out, so you kind of go in through the eye holes. Um, I think these are screenshots at this point. Yeah, it's not um, chroma keyed anymore. Um, so this is just a one solid screenshot, I want to say. Oh, is it not? Oh, that's a surprise. Apparently it's not. Oh, the eyes are. There we go. And then, yeah, these bits over here, um, these bits are just screenshots um, so after this scene the background is no longer chroma keyed it's just it's just solid just so that um, the zoom effect can work because of course as you can see the background moves as well um, so yeah it then kind of goes into this blackness you get I wanted to use sort of this um, like the eye transition idea from the first scene um, so ideas shared comes up which is of course the name um all done in the same way there's me um yeah i thought i i have a whole video so i might as well have a credit sequence um so there's me and then this is sort of a very monty python-esque um with the hands I basically got to this last bit, I was just sitting at my desk in photography and I was like, I need I need a photo of a hand pointing. So I just picked up my camera that was next to me, took the SD card out of my computer, pointed, took a photo, and then plugged it back in, cut it out in Photoshop, and then just popped it straight in here. Um, and yeah, so it's definitely this last scene with those hands is definitely a homage to, uh, is that even the right word, a homage? Sounds ridiculous. It sounds like a flower. Um, sort of like in in the Monty Python films, like the opening sequences, you'll have um, like those like cut out hands and stuff, um, sort of pointing at things. And I, I thought it worked really well, to be honest. So yeah, they just kind of so like the eye closes on me, and then opens up on this. So I just got everyone's names. Um, and that's everyone that took part in the project and then the eye closes there we go let me just run through those last scenes with sound um. then because the eye closes at the end it can then loop really easily and it can just go straight back to the beginning um, which I thought was 
quite a nifty feature. So yeah, everything just kind of works. Uh, of course, this is all key, this is all keyframe. These are just shots that I've taken from elsewhere in the video and just kind of just popped them in, um, scaled them appropriately, um, added in whatever eyes need adding in, um, and yeah, it just all works really well in the end. So hopefully this video has been informative. You have learned about the process I went through to create this. Um, you get a little look behind the scenes at uh, probably o over half of the project. Um, the other half of the project all took place inside of Photoshop. Um, that will be a another video um, because this one is probably long enough by now. But yeah, that is, that is everything I think. Uh, if there is anything else you want to know, you can go down to the comments section down below as this is YouTube and you can you can ask me some questions. I will see you next time in the Photoshop video. Cool.